In our final unit, I want to discuss kind of a mixing of different methods, which is called mixed methods research. In mixed methods research, we'll see that it allows for the researcher to utilize both qualitative and quantitative techniques. We've covered both of these in depth, um, and you can see how they provide some different types of information. So in this type of research methodology, the researchers take advantage of that and the ability to utilize both tools to really explore uh, their area of interest. So in this presentation, what are my hopes here? Again, I want to really kind of get everybody to understand the benefits and the purpose of mixing these methodologies. And generally, it's to provide a much kind of rich understanding of some type of phenomenon or a treatment or some type of per, uh, perspective or view of the participants. Uh, I want you to understand that mixed methods research is always going to include, to some extent, some qualitative measures and some quantitative measures. So they will utilize the, the types of research that we've examined over the length of this course, but a little bit of both. So they'll use a little bit of qualitative, some type of a qualitative design, and then some type of quantitative design, which includes you know, the, the, the data gathering tools, the data analysis tools that we've used and learned about in these different styles. There really are two types of mixed methods that are utilized, a concurrent mixed methods design or a sequential mixed methods design. We're gonna look at examples of each of those and what those differences are. Basically, it involves, you know, do we do one type of data collection first and then the other, or are they kind of intermingled during the length of the study? Also within concurrent methods, we'll see that uh, researchers will use a triangulation method or an embedded method. Uh, to mix these two methodologies. And they provide a little bit different uh, advantages and disadvantages. And then in sequential, there are two subcategories as well, explanatory and exploratory, where again, you utilize maybe one method to first kind of just see what's out there and then really dive in and focus using a different methodology. So we'll look at those examples as well. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at a couple of examples from our literature uh, that have utilized mixed methods to hopefully show you the, the strengths of combining these two research designs into one in exploring a specific topic. So really, what is a mixed method design? It's not any different than the designs we've learned about already. It's just you do two of them. So, uh, you know, we've learned a lot about qualitative designs earlier in this course. And then we've learned a lot of different quantitative designs. And a mixed method design just utilizes one type of qualitative design and a type of quantitative design, but together. So, you know, it really isn't different than what we've learned before. It's just that within one study, you'll see multiple designs utilized. And generally, the goal is to utilize one of the designs to enhance our understanding of the early other designs. So, these two designs can be used in a complementary fashion to bring even greater understanding than they would be able to do on their own. And that's really the goal here, is to create an opportunity for greater understanding. So the quantitative methods would be used to determine the things that we typically use to uh, measure, that we measure in research. So uh, quantitative methods can determine frequencies, relationships between variables, and so on. And then the qualitative work, the qualitative component of the study, typically will provide insight into the meanings for different uh, variables uh, or results, the reason that people make decisions, and their beliefs. So the two go really hand in hand. And we'll sometimes see that qualitative, the qualitative portion may be the primary focus of the study or the quantitative is the primary focus. But either way, we'll see that both of these methodologies are used. A lot of studies used some aspect of both qualitative and quantitative and then therefore fall into this mixed method design category. So example, an example from a project I have a student working on now He's interested in looking to see the effects of foam rolling and how it, uh, again, relates to 
uh, performance on the sit and reach test. So he wants to compare foam rolling versus static stretching on the sit and reach. That's the quantitative part, right? The quantitative portion is going to measure reaching distance under each condition. So how far can the person reach after they've done foam rolling of their hamstrings? And how far can they reach after they've done static stretching? And again, compared to a control where they haven't stretched at all. Obviously, you know, we're probably going to see that there's an increase both after the foam rolling and the static stretching, but the, what we're looking to see is, is there a bigger increase under one versus the other? Now, he's also very interested in how the different treatments make a person feel. So not only, you know, how far can they reach, but after doing these, how do they feel? Do they feel like they can move more easily? Do they feel like they are more comfortable, more relaxed? Uh, you know, do they uh, like doing one of the treatments better than the other? Because again, if they hate doing static stretching, but they really like doing the foam rolling, then they're obviously, uh, even if the stretching uh, demonstrates better results, if they're not going to do it, it's not going to help. So, so again, he wants in the qualitative portion of his study to ask about relaxation, ease of movement after the different treatments, and their likelihood of using the treatment in the future uh, prior to exercise. So again, that would be a mixed method design because he's gathering quantitative data as well as qualitative data and then using both really gives us a much better recommendation at the end of of what uh, type of treatment we should utilize with these with our clients so uh, a, a great quote that was in our book uh, that we've been utilizing throughout this course from johnson and turner says about mixed methods research it says it involves the recognition that all methods have their limitations as well as their strengths. The fundamental principle of mixed methods is followed for at least three reasons. A, to obtain convergence or corroborate findings. B, to eliminate or minimize key plausible alternative explanations for conclusions drawn from the research data and C, to elucidate the divergent aspects of a phenomenon. So what this says is that each of the two methods can be used to inform us about the reasons, the rationale, uh, the amount of change that we see. So it, these using these two methods together can often provide us a much greater understanding, a much greater depth of understanding of the phenomenon we're studying than, than uh, if we just did one of the types. So, and that's what we'll see uh, pretty clearly in the literature. So mixed methods research is a pragmatic style of research. You know, it, it, it says that, hey, doing one technique isn't enough. We can get better information, more useful information uh, to better benefit our clients, our athletes, et cetera, if we utilize multiple methods. So um, again, it really focuses on let's try to get the best type of information that we can get to use in enhancing our professional practice. The example of the uh, foam rolling study that I just mentioned, if we just did the quantitative study, we would at the end know which treatment is better for increasing hamstring flexibility. That's very useful. But as I said, if we don't also do the qualitative portion, and if we don't find which one they like to do better, if we find that both treatments are effective, but we find one is liked much better than the other, or one really gives them a much better feeling of being able to uh, move easily and relax, that makes that data even more valuable to us. That makes that study even more valuable in guiding our professional practice. So this combination of methods is, is frequently used in that way to give us the best understanding of a particular phenomenon uh, to help guide our professional practice. Typically, mixed methods research uses both deductive and inductive methods to achieve that understanding and explanation. So it looks inside the people as well as outside and makes these types of conclusions. So it really gives us a very kind of a comprehensive, uh, you know, uh, understanding of whatever it is that we're studying. And you'll see that in the studies that typically the qualitative and the quantitative information, both are very useful, but when you consider them together, it's even uh, the, the, the sum of the parts is even or is better than the individual parts. So, so it really uh, uh, works out well. 
Typically, uh, we can see that mixed methods design come in two different flavors. Okay, I'm, I'm saying that, I guess, because the previous slide had some uh, chocolate cake batter that we just mixed up. Um, uh, either a concurrent methods, uh, mixed methods design or a sequential design. So in a concurrent mixed methods design, both the qualitative and the quantitative data is collected simultaneously. In a sequential, we have the qualitative data all gathered first and then the quantitative second or vice versa, but they don't get gathered at the same time. In a concurrent mixed methods design, both of the data types are collected simultaneously. Uh, if both data is given equal weight, that's considered to be a triangulation design. Or if one is primary and the other is secondary, then it's considered to be the, an embedded design. So you'll see that some studies, you know, they're really focusing on the qualitative, you know, uh, that's the most important, or they're really focusing on the quantitative, then that would be typically an embedded design. If both are given equal weight, uh, then that's a triangulation design. The example that I gave using the foam rolling experiment, uh, basically what we did was we were we gathered uh, uh, qualitative information uh, prior to uh, the quantitative and then right after the quantitative and then also uh, far after uh, with the quantitative information being gathered kind of in the middle. So it was uh, it kind of gathered simultaneously as the person moved through the study. So on one day, uh, they were they basically did both the qualitative and the quantitative. Um, and uh, again, kind of getting a pre-idea of their expectations and then a post-treatment idea of their expectations. Um, but again, you could also really focus on one or the other. In a sequential mixed methods design, it's typically, again, the focus is on one or the other, but we want to elaborate on the findings of one method by uh, then performing the second method. Often, you may change uh, how you carry out the second part of the study based upon what you find out at the beginning. So in a sequential mixed methods design, the research will typically want to elaborate on the findings of one method by then conducting the other method. So in uh, the case of the foam roller, you could also do a study where you did, you had them do the sit and reach, you did the different treatments, and then after the fact, gather some qualitative data. That would be a way that we would do it in a sequential manner. We would first gather the data, then uh, the quali quantitative data, then we would gather the qualitative data to kind of explain what our findings were in the uh, first part of the study. In a sequential exploratory design, the qualitative is weighted more heavily, and then the quantitative is used to interpret the findings. In a sequential explanatory design, the quantitative is weighted more heavily, and the qualitative is used to interpret the findings. So the order of qualitative and quantitative kind of defines whether it's uh, what type of design it is when we're in a sequential mixed methods design. We'll see both used pretty frequently. Sometimes they'll do the qualitative first to kind of get a better understanding of what some of the questions are from participants, what are the things that are important to them, and then do a quantitative study. Sometimes, however, we do the quantitative study first and then ask them questions about why they thought they performed better under one condition versus another. So you do see both types used uh, in, uh, in the research in our field. And actually, you see all four of the types we've just discussed in the literature within our field. So anyway, I think the best way to really kind of take a closer look at some mixed methods designs is to look at a study. Uh, and that's what we'll do in part two of this presentation.